Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to make high resolution part of our previous blocking model, as well as putting texture on them. We will be cover modeling UV in Maya and texturing in Substance Painter. Let's get into it. First, I have my scene open in Maya. I'm going to pick Candle and Mark Model, go to the file and click on Export. Before I export our meshes, we need to create a folder and name it OBJ. Name our mesh Coffee and Candle, check our file type specific option, uncheck Groups, Point Group, and Material. Check on Smoothing and Normals, then hit Export. Hit Ctrl N to create a new scene and import our fresh exported mesh. Now we are going to create another cylinder and place it exactly the same spot with our blocking so that when we import high resolution to the blocking scene, it would appear exactly at the same location. From now on, we will start to take care of topology a bit more compared to blocking stage. We should start with X-sided cylinder at all time, and then subdivide it once or twice, maybe. And now we are going to match the shape with the blocking. You always want to make sure you can manage to catch the overall shape whenever at lower subdivision possible. At some point, Pressing number 3 to active subdivision mode can help us to judge the shape before we do actual subdivision. Now we are creating the volume, and adding lines can help to preserve the edge shape. Making a good looking bevel. If number 3 subdivision preview looks nice, now we may do actual subdivide it one step higher so that it won't look like a low resolution game model. The same process will be applied to the candle as well. Start from excited and matching the shape in number 3 subdivision preview mode. Last step is always doing extra subdivide, which will double up the resolution. I used to see many students stop right away when they subdivide. This is not a good habit, because smoothing the object can get you many pointless lines that you would have to remove manually. As you can see here, I'm deleting some of the line or maybe even adding lines to area to help achieving the shape with least line possible, optimizing the topology for the shape. Also, adding lines wisely can also help to prevent UV stretches. Now we are going to create the candle mesh in it. We can start by duplicating faces from the candle mark itself so that the shape is perfectly matched. First, we need to close the cap, and then bridge the holes, and reverse the face. Next is to transform component to shrink your model a little bit, like 0.001 value apply. This is to prevent the candle collide with the glass face. You want to shrink it a bit so that the render engine can understand the render priority for light rays. Now the same method will be applied to our coffee's liquid. Next, we are going to UV these meshes. I always start with camera base so that I can make sure all the UV are connected based on our model. Then we will use UV tools to cut and seal the right edges. Picking edges to cut is output dependence. If you are doing UV for games, you will have to consider to hide your seam line the best way. For steel frame render, you only need to find a blind spot. But luckily, Substance Painter provides triplanar option which can help us a lot in the seam line hiding. So now I'm basically cutting those edges without really concerned too much about seam. Instead, I only want them to unfold properly, straighten and align nicely like what I'm doing in the video.
Now I'm going to arrange my UV placement. I will be placing my candle to second square and coffee to the first. By doing this means that we are doing UDEM workflow. Generally, we want our UV to place in the first square shape. And then we are going to have one texture at the end for each channel like color and roughness, metallic and normal map. By using UDEM method, right, we are going to end up with two texture maps instead for each channel. So the benefits of doing this is to break through the texture size limitations for render engines. The intention here may seem to be pointless at the first sight, which we can simply separate two objects into two sets individually. But by doing this, we can work two different objects at the same time in Substance Painter. Also at the shader stage, this will save us a lot of time. But bear in mind, UDEM may not be a good idea if your output was for a mobile game or a weak graphic machine. It can cause a lot of computational power. We are now going to smooth them for the last time and creating a little spring for the candle. We can now export our model and replace the one we used to export from blocking. Let's head to Substance Painter now. In Substance Painter, we are going to click New Project and select our OBJ file. You can follow my settings here. If you are not familiar with the rest of the settings, then hit OK. Most of the time, we will go big map first before start painting in Substance Painter, but that is only because if you are going to rely on generator or backup map information to do texturing. For generator, it is mainly for object that is more complex, dirty and old. In our case here, these are just coffee mug and candle. We don't really need to rely on those information and we can simply use procedural and grunge to complete the entire texturing process. Baking map can also make your substance file heavy. I'm starting with tree folder glass, candle, and coffee. Adding an opacity map channel for it, then change my shader to PPR Metal Alpha Blend. I always start with a base material and I have all the channel turned on. You can understand this base as like a clean material. Imagine this thing is completely new. It is cleanest look of the material. Now we are starting from coffee, Change the color to black, roughness, and all the way to zero. Then hide candle and glass because they are on top and blocking the coffee base material. Then we'll have to create a black mask for the coffee folder, not the base material. And press number four to active fill tool. Assign white color to the coffee UV. Then we'll move on to glass base. Assign a black mask and fill only the glass UV so that whatever under this folder will only affect the glass. Make our opacity map barely visible and set roughness all the way down, color to black. Remember to share it to the candle mark as well. Both of them can use the same glass attributes. Candle base can be pretty simple. Set to pitch color and adjust the roughness, little and Assign mask accordingly. Remember that we always want our base mesh to turn on all the channels so that we won't end up with channel that comes with transparent areas. Now I'm creating a base material for the string. After base material, I always like to start with scratches because almost everything will probably comes with some tiny scratch. Now we are going to start with the glass. First, create a black colored material. We don't see any changes yet until we create a black mask and pick some grunge map assigned to its fill. Then go back to the material attribute, bring down height. Now we should see some bumps. We can always go to the grunge map attribute to tweak the look of the scratch if necessary. Next, we are going to add some random noise bump. 
The process is exactly the same with the scratch but only using a different grunge map. For preview purpose, we are going to make glass color to white temporarily to see the effects of the scratches damage. At this point, it will be a great time to start saving our Substance Painter progress. Hit Ctrl S and create another folder under the project file, name it Substance Painter. Then save our project in it. All the future Substance Painter file will be saved here as well. Next, move on to the little candle string. Again, the idea is the same. Set our height map down and apply a pattern that looks like string texture. It is not necessary to be super accurate. We only need to have some bump pattern on it. Then we are making small little foam on top of the coffee. More or less, it is the same. We assign a brighter color, brighter brown, and assign noise map to the layer mask. We are not doing actual bubble. Instead, it is only a visual cheat, making small holes so that they look like bubble. You can also create multiple fill under the mask file like what I'm doing in the video so that it appears to have bigger bubbles and small bubbles. And we further improve the reflection roughness of the candle, giving it a little bit of roughness variation. Nothing in this world shares the same reflection roughness from the entire surface. They should always come with different value even if it is not noticeable by the people. Even a super clean glass can have roughness variation. The method is just the same. Create a new material and check on roughness channel. Then assign a grunge map to the masking. Do the same for every different material. Sometimes you will have to go different lighting angles to check if every part looks good. I am going to further enhance this by tweaking some of the parameter but all my recipe had been told. No big changes will be applied after this video ends, only slightly different roughness value. Last step in this tutorial is to save your file. We will be discussing how to export this to Maya in the ninth lesson. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.